First order of business. The title. It has nothing to do with the anime. I just need something. You know, I need something that... I need something flashy! <laughs> you know, having an audio-only podcast on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio. It's kind of hard for me to decide to use my regular voice, even though I could just, you know, use my high-pitched voice the whole time. But I'm probably not going to do only either one. I'll probably do a combination, um, and my high pitch voice is hard to maintain, but I can use it forever, no, I can't use my high pitch voice forever, but anyway, um, I want to use chat GPT, I want to get ChatGPT involved. So we're heading over to ChatGPT.com and I'm gonna search a few things and I'm gonna give my take on what it says. So first I'm gonna say how fast Hypothetically, do you think humans could run if they trained, if they reach the highest possible, if they reach the highest possible human limit? So the question is, I haven't entered it yet, but here's the question. How fast, hypothetically, do you think humans could run if they reached the highest possible human limit? And highest possible human limit of running speed on two of running speed. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Now I answered. Now it's uh, typing. It's typing. Um, this is long. I don't know if I can read all this out loud. Yeah, it basically says that you can't really get much faster because of limits, genetics, physiology, technology, and training. So it says 30 to 35 miles per hour. And, yeah, this is just BS. So, um, uh, you don't train cardio by running outside or running on a treadmill or, um, using a bike or an elliptical. Um, cardio is... Doing those things, um, normally, people will do that to sweat and burn calories, and all of that is fine, all of that is good, but there's a difference between cardio exercise and cardio that's meant to train your heart and get you faster and improve your heart endurance. So... You don't improve your heart endurance by jogging or running or even sprinting. What improves your heart endurance, because if if you use an elliptical or you use a bike, you're working your leg muscles. So, if, if I say I'm the best at elliptical in the world, so my my cardio is the best. No, that's not true. If I'm if if 
whoever's the best at elliptical or bike in the world has the strongest and fastest body for that specific exercise. If if you're the fastest runner in the world, so 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 actually let me go back. So so if I'm the the fastest and strongest at the elliptical and and I'm not like a thousand pounds, okay, where I'm weighing down on it so much. I'm like a reasonable weight, a, a reasonable size, and I'm the best at elliptical. That means the motion of moving the handles with my arms, moving my feet on the pedals, that repetitive motion, total body, I'm the strongest and fastest at that. That doesn't mean I can run the fastest. That doesn't say anything about my heart, my lungs. All it says is that specific motion. Now, if you're the fastest runner, um, that doesn't mean your heart endurance is the fastest either. Because you could be the fastest runner and six foot something inches tall. You could be five foot something inches tall. You could be uh, stronger in your legs. You could be heavier in your upper body than another person. You could, it, it, even down to your feet and toes, if you have injuries, uh, everything goes into consideration. So, and this question wasn't hard endurance. What I asked ChatGPT was, how fast hypothetically do you think humans could run if they reach the highest possible human limit of running speed? And this says nothing about one-legged running. So, clearly, ChatGPT Sometimes ChatGPT um, gives sources it, it referenced. Here it did not. But um, it's hard for me to explain this, even though I have many times before. Um, because to be honest, I've, I've kind of lost interest in trying to explain to people and prove to people and sort of connect the different ideas that come into play. Like if I if I was a bodybuilder, if I was a bodybuilding coach for for IFBB Pro and I was helping people uh, manage their steroid uses, steroid usage and manage their training, manage their diet, um, because all of them are on steroids, not that you should use steroids, but that's just, it, it, it comes with that, but what I would do is I would talk about, oh, how many times are you training a week, um, your exercise selection, your protein intake, collagen, um, macros, carbs, fats, um, what medications are you on, supplements, um, are you improving, what are your goals, um, what is your weight, there's like a plethora of different things going on. If, if I were just to say, okay, the fastest is Usain Bolt, 27.8 miles per hour. Yes, he's tall, but there are other tall people. They're all slower than him. And I don't say anything about what's his one-legged training, what's his hard endurance, what's his anaerobic capacity, what's his aerobic capacity his lung capacity, his, his, uh, 
leg strength relative to body weight, his vertical jump, his broad jump, his horizontal one-legged broad jump, forward to the side, backward, is he using ankle weights, is he training his hip flexors, um, like, these are all things that matter if you want to approach any anywhere within the realm of the human limit for running speed. So I don't know anyone who approaches fitness like I do, and I watch all the big fitness YouTubers and a lot of small ones. I watch cardio fitness YouTubers, I watch bodybuilding fitness YouTubers, I watch fitness YouTubers that are meant for everyone, meant for beginners, meant for intermediates, meant for advanced lifters, trainers. And I've seen the type of stuff that they teach, I've seen the mistakes that they make, I have a brother who's a personal fitness trainer. I've met people who are stronger than most people on the internet. I've met and gotten to know. Um, but... Oh, wait. Someone followed. Swag diff. Uh, I have to, um, follow them back. I have to follow them back. Swag this. Oh, I can't, um, sorry, Swag Diff, I can't, um, I can't listen to your video much because I'm doing a podcast, so, um, it'll copyright me if I have uh, stuff in here. Okay, back to the podcast. Um, um, um. Back to the podcast. Back to the podcast. So, uh. uh and I'll always, like, be up to repeat this stuff because obviously doing videos in the past where I teach everything all in one video, like, not. Not everyone is going to watch that one video, so it, it never goes well. Um, actually, every time recently I've done that, it's gotten like less than 20 views on YouTube. So I, I really need to like change the titles of my videos, but... Um, but yeah, so, now I will forget about ChatGPT for a second. Oh, wait, before I actually give the actual answer, because in this podcast, I will actually take the time to think about it, and because I do have the knowledge to answer this question, I will be telling you what I think is how fast hypothetically humans could run 
if they reach the highest possible human limit of running speed. I will be telling you, and it's not going to be, uh, what does this say, 30 to 35 miles per hour. It's not going to be 100 miles per hour. It's going to be at least, um, at the very least, I would say, uh, 400 miles per hour. I'm going to say that for a small female, for a small female, at least 400 plus miles per hour and that that means they're like gigantic legs and and tiny upper body and like no tits so uh uh but i'm gonna ask chat gbt a few more questions so here here first is i i have to ask something so uh How strong, hypothetically, could a human, a human's lower body get relative to their body weight if they train if they train um to reach the highest possible limit of strain. Of low of lower body strain. Okay, now it's answering this question. Yep. Uh biomechanics, muscle physiology, genetic potential, training and nutrition, technological and biomedical enhancements, hypothetical strength limits. Um, hypothetical upper limits. So, these are all very bad answers chat GBT has given me. So, it's saying, um, its final answer is lifts up to five to six times their body weight under optimal conditions. So a squat or deadlift, a thousand to twelve hundred pounds for a two hundred pound individual. So all of this is wrong. So I will tell you I will I will answer both these questions right now. So strength well, first of all, speed at, at least like a few hundred miles per hour, several hundred miles per hour for a small female, a short female. And strength for, for even a short female, um, many, many times their body weight. And this uh, squat deadlift five to six times their body weight is not right because we're not using those lifts. We're not using weighted barbell with weight plates um, squat or deadlift because that's requiring back strength, arm strength to hold the bar. You're going to be doing a leg press or just doing weighted calisthenics for your legs. And, and, uh, 
and isolating muscles. So, the correct answer is probably, um, you know, for a 200 pound individual, it's saying. So, I gotta up the numbers a bit. So, uh, because here's to put in perspective. If you train for one year, you can get way stronger than me. One year with breaks, not not 365 days of pure training, so a year's worth of muscular experience, not even a year's worth of muscular experience. Just one year consistently with breaks here and there. You can get way stronger than me. My My um my best lifts Johnson, what's good? Just got home from eating a steak dinner, but got you up all night. Much love. Oh dang. Johnson Johnson <laughs> I have you tab, Johnson. Okay, I have to answer these questions, because no one else can. So, um, first of all, if it was squat or deadlift with a, with a weight plate loaded barbell, um, that would lower the numbers people could do. So, a five to six times body weight under optimal conditions, because that's what Chat GPT is saying. Squat or deadlift, that would be like maybe, I don't know, seven, eight times. Um, squat or deadlift with um, smaller weights. So, uh, like having a big barbell on your back or picking up from the floor, if it was dumbbells or if it was like um, strapped onto you or you were using a leg press machine. Anyway, um, forget ChatGPT. So I'm just going to go back to the question. So. How strong, hypothetically, could a human's lower body get relative to their body weight if they train to reach the highest possible limits of lower body strength? So, I'm just going to say every single muscle is going to be lifting way more than five to six times their body weight. Your shin alone is going to be lifting like thousands of pounds it it does not take a lot of training 
to to even for a two hundred pound individual, um, like what you have to do is, um, at the very least. You would do two-legged squats, one-legged squats, one-legged weighted squats, body weight leg extensions, body weight leg curls, do those weighted, then progress to one-legged, weighted one-legged, and keep going with the weighted one-legged. Then the moves after that, that get really advanced. So... I mean, there's already been people who are stronger than this, who are stronger than um, five to six times their body weight with their entire leg, because this is your entire leg you're using. I'm saying this is just like a sorry excuse, like. That you see people, what they're doing, and they're not doing any better. So you just raise the numbers up a bit from what you see people currently doing. But, um, for instance, it's possible to reach a, a, um, so let me see, I, I, I'll do all the calculations out loud, I'll do them all out loud, so, if you use a leg extension weight machine, and you do it on one leg, Let's say it's your right leg, your dominant leg. So it's closer to the machine on your right side. So it's harder because the the leg extension thing, for those of you listening to the audio version, you can't see this, but basically a leg extension weight machine has a padded um, bar. And you, you press against that to extend your leg with your quadricep. But the longer the longer you go to press it, the more length that's resisting your leg extension, the easier it is. So the machine is to your right side, and the chair is on the left. So if your right hand, if your right hand and right leg dominant, and you leg extend with your right leg, you're closer to the machine, because there's a padded bar. So, if you do it with your left leg, you have a little bit more distance and leverage to extend and lift it up. Anyway, um, it's basically physics, lever arms, and pulleys and stuff, but, um, if you're doing a one-legged weight machine leg extension, what would happen is, if you can do, um, if you can do, um, Body weight leg extensions, calisthenic leg extensions, which is where you kneel on your knees and shins and feet. So you're you're sitting on your knees and then you lean back. So from your from your knees to your head, aligned in a straight line, leans back. And so your butt touches your feet like um like this which in the audio portion you can't see this but this move 
there is no that. But I I can't do it well without using a muscular experience. So I'm uh I'm not gonna demonstrate perfectly because I don't I'm not doing a full workout tonight. But anyway, um if you can do that on two legs, you can't max out the machine if you, if you're my body weight, like around 120 something or 130 something pounds. I'm 100. I'm like 128 pounds. So you can't max out the machine on one leg. You can max it out on two legs if you can do that move most um leg extension machines but um that move um really uh it'll get your one legged um weight machine leg extension to be with with the weight machine which makes it easier than with an ankle weight and you sitting down and lifting like extensioning an ankle weight but it'll make uh your leg extension with this specific setup so a weight plate leg extension weight machine the standard kind at most gyms it'll make that um like twice your body weight a little bit more uh on one leg so and then if you can do a one-legged um perfect form body weight leg extension um you're probably doing i guess four times more than four times and now here's the part i want to get into so there is the hardest possible quad move because leg extension is squats the hardest possible quad move is the no hands push-up so very few people have been able to do it on two legs. I've never seen anyone do it on one leg. And the no hands push up is as it says. You do a push up with your feet. So you lean forward on your feet. Your body is straight. You lean forward from a standing position. Legs together. And you lift yourself back up with your feet. That move uses hip flexors too, but specifically for quads, it requires um, perhaps a one-legged weight plate, weight machine, leg extension, one-legged lift one rep max of over um over i would say uh see because i weigh 128 pounds but if i here's the thing so you can't see this in the video portion I mean, audio portion of the podcast, but it should be um, on my uh, Twitch as a highlight. So go to twitch.tv slash perfectfitness to see the video portion. But let's say I can lift an ankle weightage just on my ankle, not higher up on my leg. So imagine I have the perfect ankle weightage, the perfect design ankle weight of exactly my body weight, 
on one ankle, pick one ankle. So let's just say my left ankle. So I lift it up, my leg horizontally level, and that's my body weight. That does not mean that I can do a one-legged, no-hands push-up on my left leg, or whichever leg I did that with, because I'm lifting the length of only my leg. So, my leg would have to be as long as my whole height, five foot three, to be able to do that. So, it's actually twice as hard, if you think about it. So, uh, or almost twice as hard, or something. But, um, and if I could do that, because right now, I can do maybe 30 pounds maybe a fourth of my body weight, and I can do the two-legged calisthenic leg extension, where you lean back until your butt touches your feet. Perfect form, not, not the introductory version. Perfect form version means you have access to partial baby wraps of the one-legged cast and a leg extension. You have partial access to that. But, so I can do maybe a fourth of my body weight, lift up, straight leg, and back down. So, that is corresponding to a, a little over a double one-legged weight plate loaded leg extension weight machine leg extension for one rep a little over double body weight and that weight machine makes it a little bit easier significantly easier than if i were sitting in my chair right now with twice my body weight as an ankle weight and I lifted up my leg. It would make it significantly easier. But anyway, the weight machine does. But so it, it corresponds to that. So quadruple that to get my body weight on one leg, which now means I can do a two legged no hands push up. So doing a two-legged no-hands push-up is, is um, four times that. And it was already two and a quarter, may, maybe two and a quarter of, or two and a third, two and a fifth of my body weight. So that times four will just round it up to nine. So I'm lifting that much weight in the weight plate, the weight stack, not weight plate, um, leg extension. But then on one leg, doubles that. So now it's 18 times. It could even be 20 times. So we have 18, 19, 17, 20, I don't know. Let's just say 18 times body weight um, weight plate, I mean weight stack, leg extension. So uh, If, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's too much, it's, it's too much weight, um, to be talking about, but that is what's possible.
Um, so that's quads. So take quads, which is kind of tied with glutes for the biggest muscle, and take every other muscle and scale it down. So your quads can reach 18 ish times body weight relative strength. Your quads can. And that's not even the limit. That's after maybe a few years of perfect training with breaks. You could do this your whole life and keep getting stronger. Your muscles would just keep getting stronger. There is no such thing as too hard on your bones. Your muscles, skeletal muscles, like your biceps, your triceps, your quads, they control, support, bolster your bones, your skeleton. It can be hard on your nerves if you're pushing yourself and you're not strong enough, but your bones aren't going to break. Because you're training and gradually improving. You're not going into the gym your first day, never trained, and benching two plates on each side. You're just not doing that. So there's no such thing as, oh, that's impossible. Your body would fall apart. You're not... Going into the gym and doing that out of nowhere. So, so basically, I would say, um, I would call that two to three years of muscular experience to be very lenient and open minded. Because it could be less. But I would say um, two to three years. In, in eight months, you could get like twice as strong as me. In eight months, someone could get twice as strong as me. I could get twice as strong as me if I went back reverse time and now I'm this age I'm, everything is the same except I've never trained before my first eight months muscular experience if I used it right I could be twice as strong as I am now so Um, you take, and that's with breaks. Honestly, let's just say, let's just say, uh, one year and you reach this limit, this limit that ChatGPT is saying. You train for one year, you reach that. Or, or even, you, you train for one year in muscular experience terms, meaning it's like three years real life. And you're doing everything. You've now, you've now reached the point, you've now reached the point, you can't see this on the audio only. But you've now reached the point where the only exercises you can do to strength train are you have to lie down flat, put your arms over your head, and either press with your hands or press with your feet. Meaning I would lie down, hands over my head, probably with added weight. Because I can already do it with 
body weight only. And I press with my heel on my foot if I'm lying on my back or lying on my front, my toes and ball of my foot or the palm of my hand or the back of my hand or whatever side of my hand. And I lift up, up and down with added weight up and down. And, and I'm doing that. Or for um if if my upper body is still weaker than my lower body, I'm I'm uh lying down and I press from my waist and it lifts me up like one arm full planche, but harder because with a bunch of added weight and uh, other stuff. But, um, you can't say that these are the limits because if you were training ideally, you wouldn't be doing bench press, you wouldn't be doing barbell exercises. You would be doing weighted calisthenics and you would be progressing every single workout like I am, except with the right equipment, with the right diet, with the right genetics. And this that I'm talking about isn't even the hypothetical limit encompassing all factors. These limits I'm saying, the 18 times for quads, that's me, and I am nowhere near what the perfect specimen would be, testosterone level wise, bone density level wise, muscle belly wise, but anyway, um, if you want an even better answer, Take, take all 25 years of muscular experience and um, take all those and just forget about them. Just imagine that that's how much muscle you can build, not strength. Think about that. So, a pound of muscle, how much strength is that? Or tendon. And you, you think about that. Because I want you to think about how much each individual pound is worth. I looked it up before. I don't know what Chad GBT will say, but I've looked it up and I've seen different numbers, different ranges. The highest I've seen is that one pound of the densest possible lean muscle mass can lift 73 pounds of weight. So if my bicep only had one pound of muscle, I could curl 73 pounds. Now, I don't think my bicep has much more than one pound of muscle, so I agree with that statement. My arm is pretty light, and that's my whole arm, including my hand and part of my shoulder. But we're gonna dive into this. So I, I calculated an 18 times multiplier, 
We're gonna say that number. Now I'm a hundred and thirty pounds, let's say, not a hundred twenty-eight. And we're gonna say eighteen times a hundred thirty. Sorry if you did this before me. 18 times 130. So that's 2,340 pounds. That's 2,340 pounds. One legged weight stack leg extension on one leg. So, uh, I'm tired, um, let's ask chat GPT, how much can So just take that number and multiply it by like dozens or even like, yeah, by like dozens. So over like, like over a hundred thousand pounds both like. How much can, how much hypothetically can one pound of the densest possible human lean muscle mass live in weight? What the hell? It says... It says... Here, here's what it says. Here's what ChatGBT says. It, and it has all this calculations and stuff. But here's what it says. Summary. Hypothetically, one pound of the densest possible human lean muscle mass could generate a lifting force of approximately 2,886 pounds under optimal conditions. This is a theoretical value, and actual performance would be lower due to factors like inefficiencies in force transfer, joint mechanics, and the fact that not all muscle fibers can be activated simultaneously during a maximal lift. So this is the shit ChatGPT gives me. It gives me too little on some things and too much on other things.
Oh my baby! Oh my baby! <laughs> Oh my glow smell, because I didn't use enough soap when I washed them in the washing machine. I use all natural unscented soap, so they're probably clean. It's just there's no scent to make them smell better. So there's no scent. But they smell bad! <laughs> okay, now we move on to the second question. We're an hour into the stream almost. So how fast could they run? So I have address strength. So let's put it like this. If you can do a pistol squat, um, if you can do a pistol squat, and you've trained your hardener. So with the hard endurance training, let me talk about this. Yes. With the hard endurance training. The hard endurance <laughs> Um Um so you don't really train hard endurance that high because after you master step aerobics it doesn't really go up further. So um, so yeah, you just do step aerobics, and I'm not sure the limit for hard endurance. I don't think anyone knows. I don't think chat GPT can help, but I would say, um, take that multiplier of, uh, 18 times. And multiply it by, uh, by three. So you triple, you, you triple your hard endurance. You triple your hard